Can I give you all a very warm welcome to the ninth annual Youth Work of the Year Awards Dinner. It's tremendous to see so many people tonight, here tonight. I hope you all enjoy yourself. I hope you are all going to celebrate. We couldn't put on this award without the support of our partners and sponsors. And I'd like to say a big thank you to them for their continuing interest in the work of the youth sector. They're tremendous and valuable. In particular, I'd like to mention some of our key sponsors, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, Young Scott, CLD Standards Council for Scotland, Youth Scotland, Scottish Community Safety Network, DOA Scotland, SQA and Education Scotland. These have all been very strong supporters of these awards and of the youth sector generally. We'd also like to welcome and thank our new sponsors, Creative Scotland and Keep Scotland Beautiful. Without the assistance of these sponsors, it would be very difficult to put on this awards. So a big thank you to them. I think it's terribly important that we continue to celebrate success. It shows the strength of the youth sector and the work that you all do in your various communities and bodies is actually priceless. We've been trying to put a value on it. We're in the, the days where everybody's into cost-benefit analysis. So we've been commissioned quite a bit of work to strengthen the case for continued and additional investment in the youth sector. But you can't put a price on what you are actually doing as a sector. So as well as thanking you for all that you do, I'd also like to thank our judges. It's a terrible job being a judge. Uh, it's easy if there's a clear winner, <coughs> but as you'll see tonight, everybody's a, a winner. It's tremendous what you are all doing. So thanks very much to the judging panel. You've had a very difficult task again this year. I know it's an impossible task, but uh, as they say, somebody has to do it, and we're grateful that you have all volunteered to do it. And when we announce the winners and finalists tonight, you'll see that they come from all over Scotland. And that is the strength of the youth sector. It's all embracing, taken in all different uh, parts of Scotland. And it's a tremendous strength. So on behalf of everybody who is a finalist tonight, our sincere congratulations from Youth Work Scotland. As I said earlier, these are all winners. So please enjoy this, this evening. Uh, enjoy your actual success. We've also got the Twitter wall going again tonight. And again, if you would I'd encourage you all to tweet. Uh, and to tweet, you hashtag. Two years ago, I was up here and uh, I had a note that said YouthLink Awards 14. It's now YouthLink Awards 16. And I, I didn't know what that squiggly thing, knots and crosses were. <coughs> but the audience shouted, shouted out, hashtag. I've never, ever forgot it. I don't know why they put it in my script. I don't need it now. I'll never forget that experience. I meant to check it out before I got up. And sitting in front of 300 people uh, and thinking, I don't know what that, <laughs> how you say that word. <laughs> so I had to describe it as knots and crosses. Anyway. Tremendous say uh, for the, <laughs> the knowledge I gleamed at that actual night, and I say I'll never forget it. So uh, to Susan, who writes the actual script, just forget it next year. I'll never, ever forget it. Uh, we're delighted to have with us Aileen Campbell, MSP, Minister for Children and Young People. Aileen's been a tremendous supporter of the youth sector for a, a number of years, and I now I'd like to invite the Minister to say a few words. So I'll give her a round of applause. Thank you, Alex. Um, I was here at that two years ago as well, but I was quite glad because I think two years ago we all, were all told to dance up that red carpet as well, so I've managed to uh, miss that one out. But um, good evening, everyone, and what a fantastic night to join together to celebrate all that is good about youth work. 
And this is a real highlight of my calendar, a chance for us to say thanks to all the youth workers and volunteers who are dedicated to and passionate about ensuring young people the length and breadth of this country have opportunities, are encouraged and developed and can go to, on to be confident individuals who contribute fully to our society. Now, many of you give up your own time to do this and are motivated by a desire to see young people succeed. And indeed, many of our youth workers are young people themselves, determined to put something back into our communities. Now, tonight's celebration is about all that is good in our country, and it's about recognising the unique contribution youth work makes to Scotland. Now, youth work really does change lives. It builds self-esteem and confidence in our young people. It builds capacity in our young people to consider risk, make reasoned decisions and take control. It helps young people to develop the ability to manage personal and social relationships. And it helps young people develop new skills and find new areas of learning. It keeps young people at its heart and it ensures that young people have voices in our communities and in our society. What you do has a positive impact on every single part of our country. Indeed, your own YouthLink research shows this sector has a workforce of over 80,000 people, including 70,000 volunteers, and that youth work volunteers clock up uh, 13 million hours a week, and during that week, reach in excess of 380,000 young people. And as the Minister for Young People, I am always immensely proud to have youth work in my portfolio and to also those talk to my other ministerial colleagues about the impact that your work has on their areas of interest, whether it's youth justice, health and well-being, social cohesion, equality, the economy or employment, youth work's breadth of reach is absolutely massive. And you've been busy articulating the impact you make through encouraging young people to visit their MSPs and tell them about how youth work has changed their lives in their community and at your recent Youth Work Strategy Expo, bringing together the sector eh, to further develop positive relationships and partnership working. The Youth Work Awards Network also illustrates and evidences the positive way that youth work changes lives. 73,000 awards were completed in 2014-15 alone. That's a 273% growth over the last six years. That growth and those hours represent dedication, it represents diligence from our young people to achieve great things. And your work has received international plaudits with the OECD recognising the sector's contribution to the curriculum for excellence and public life. Your work is truly appreciated by us in the government, which is why we've committed to a 14 million budget for the new third sector fund, allowing the best quality work in this area to continue to be supported. And it's also why our recently launched, launched National Improvement Framework acknowledges the important role that the National Youth Work Strategy plays in contributing to improving outcomes for young people, either in direct partnership with schools or in other community settings. No other government in the UK is providing such recognition and making such a commitment to youth work. And we want to make sure that children and young people in all parts of Scotland, whether they are in our most affluent or most deprived areas, have their fair chance to flourish. And we also want to build a strong, sustainable economy, support community empowerment and encourage democratic engagement. Youth work is key to achieving all of those ambitions. So that's why tonight I'm pleased to announce our commitment to invest £500,000 for the National Voluntary Organisations Support Fund to continue to help build capacity and support volunteering. And we're delighted to continue with this demonstration of support. And because of our need to contribute and, and continue to ensure that the work that you do is fully recognised and appreciated by our colleagues across education, we'll bring together in a Youth Work Summit the Association of Directors of Education, our local authority chief execs, the EIS, the GTCS and COSLA to explore how head teachers and teachers can further develop their partnership with the Youth Work Services. So there's been a lot achieved and we've seen significant improvement and looking ahead we have a lot uh, of, to celebrate as well. We have an election in a few weeks time, well we'll tell if we can celebrate or not but anyway uh, for the first, time, the first time though 16 and 17 year olds will can be able to cast their votes and I think that's an incredibly positive uh, development. And we'll also be able to build on our respect for our nation's amazing uh, young people by celebrating them for the very first time in the Year of Young People in 2018. 
So we have a lot to look forward to and, we'll, and we can achieve great things if we continue to work in partnership. Now I'm aware, very aware, that I'm standing between you and your grub. So I'll finish off by saying, well done to all of the finalists and congratulations in advance to all the winners. I'm really vexed that I can't stay uh, for you, with you this evening as I've got to get home to my wee baby who's a wee bit ill and is needing his mammy. Uh, but most of all this evening, I want to say and express my thanks to you. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for your commitment and your dedication to our nation's young people. Youth work changed my life as a young girl growing up in Perthshire, and you've been transforming lives for generations and will continue to transform lives for many generations to come. It's been my absolute privilege uh, to work with you over these last four or five years. So, uh, and to conclude, have a great evening this, uh, this night. Please, though, because I can't be here, do text so I can tweet me, uh, or not text me, tweet me. So I'm as getting as bad as Alec. <laughs> Please tweet me. Uh, let me know who's all winning. Let me see all your uh, selfies and all the things that you get up to this evening because it is a wonderful evening. It's a wonderful way to celebrate uh, this fantastic sector. And I hope that we continue to work together in many years to come. So have a wonderful evening. Enjoy yourselves uh, and have a great night celebrating this fantastic work that you do. So thank you all very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have our first award of the evening. And this is Youth Worker of the Year, full-time or full-time equivalent, sponsored by Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. The winner of the Youth Worker of the Year full-time award is Megan Scott. <laughs> Uh, please welcome our finalists onto the stage now to receive their awards, Graham Johnston and Rohanna Irvin. Moving on to our second award of the evening, and this category is Youth Worker of the Year, Sessional paid part-time sponsored by Youth Link Scotland and our thanks to them. And the winner is Barry Jordan. Please welcome Michelle Blair and Greg Cuthbert. <laughs> So to our Volunteer of the Year, sponsored by Young Scott, this award recognises the commitment of a volunteer to improving young people's personal and social development through youth work. So the winner is... Can I have a drum roll? <laughs> can do that? Right. Okay, the winner oh. is... Natasha Kerr. Smile to the camera. Shoot on your flame to the fire. It's real like your name on a flyer. And ladies and gentlemen, now please welcome our finalists up onto the stage to receive their awards, Andrew Christie and Kirstine McKenzie. Congratulations. Congratulations. The winner of the Innovative Practice Team of the Year Award is Outside In Youth Work. Yes. Please welcome to the stage the finalists in this category. They are Youth Works team and Ayrshire College Sport and Fitness team. Please come on up. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> well done. <sighs> Climate Change Champion, sponsored by Keep Scotland Beautiful, recognises youth workers who demonstrate commitment to changing behaviours in relation to climate change in their work with young people. Uh, the winner of the Climate Change Champion Award is David Hodson. And please welcome to the stage now the finalists 
uh, the Ayrshire College Environmental Management students and Team JCCF. And the winner of the Time to Shine Arts and Creativity Award is Danur. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the finalists to receive their award, Thinking Differently on Alcohol Project and Vomo TV. And our next category is another new one for 2016. It's Young Persons Champion, sponsored by Youth Scotland. Congratulations to all the finalists tonight, uh, but the winner of the Young Persons Champion is... Elspeth Husband and Sandy Davidson. I'd like now to welcome to the stage our finalists, and they are James Bittman and Riley Bartholomew. The last of our new awards for 2016 is Youth Worker Supporting CFE and Attainment, sponsored by Education Scotland. It's a great privilege to award this new award um, and also to thank all the finalists for all the really hard work. And we've got a really unusual result. We have not one winner, but two. So Colin Lemon and Elaine Baxter, come on up, please. Go ahead. with CYP, come on up to the stage. Our next category is Agencies and Partner Organisations Worker of the Year. Now this award is sponsored by the Scottish Community Safety Network and thank you to them. And the winner is Bill Reside. <laughs> And to now welcome up the finalists on stage to receive their awards, Nicola McTaggart and Brian Mackay. Huge congratulations to all the finalists and what a fantastic celebration of youth work tonight. But the winner, Youth Work Manager of the Year is... Mark Malloy. Please welcome the other finalists to the stage to receive their awards, Dean Goddard and Hugh Scott. As we move on to our 11th award, which is Lifetime Achievement Award, Fellowship of YouthLink Scotland. And we recognize those individuals who will receive a Lifetime Achievement Award. The recipients will also become YouthLink Scotland Fellows. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Lifetime Achievers, Jim Duffy, Jim Thompson, Stanley McMillan, and John Forrest. I am so proud to live and work in a country that acknowledges and recognises and celebrates the contribution of youth work the way that we do. And the overall winner is Natasha Kerr.
Can I just say what a fantastic, fantastic privilege it is um, to, to see once again how many people are committed to our young people in the right way, that are committed not to condemning them, but to condoning them, not to put them down, but to raise them up. And we, we, everybody in this room knows what a privilege it is to be able to work with young people on their terms. It might be harder, but nevertheless, the result is phenomenal for those young people, and youth work truly does change lives. I've been trying to work out in my head for the last 43 years as a youth worker, starting as a very young person myself, what it is. I thought I'd get that in. Um, just trying to work out what it is we do, uh, because we find it very hard to explain it to politicians, and we find it very hard to explain it to, to uh, policy makers and to funders. And yet what we do is so, so precious and so, so um, important. And the thing is, it is not necessarily about control. And it's not about telling somebody what might be good for them, although that all happens. Um, and I've kind of worked it out that it's about, it's about you as a youth worker walking the plank and meeting young people on their terms, taking the hits on the way in very often, because what you have to build up above all else is the trust of those young people that you're not there in any shape or form to exploit them or to tell them what's best for them. You're there to work and go alongside them to see where we can go together and where they might want to go and take themselves. And you offer honest um, advice along the way and help. And when they fall, you pick them up. You don't judge necessarily. It doesn't mean you're soft. Never met a soft youth worker yet. Um, and I'm sure young people would agree they don't want soft youth workers. But I think what we do above all is we exchange power for influence. And that, that is an amazing walking of the plank because society generally is built on very strict rules. This is what I do and this is what you do. And if I tell you to do this, you do that. And all of that. And we work differently, but we do work to the very same ends as our colleagues in formal education and as our colleagues um, in further and higher education. We above all want young people to have the best for what's for them, to achieve their potential, and to be functioning citizens and take part in society to the full and to make the best of themselves and to be able to do what they want to do, whether it's a family or whether it's a partner or whatever it happens to be, and to be happy and contribute to society. So we all want the same things in a sense. And, and one of the things that, that occurred to me was for about eight years we did a Being Young in Scotland, every two years we did a survey. And when you took, stripped away all the, you know, all the fancy words and everything, what young people were looking for was exactly the same as we were looking for. They were wanting somewhere where they could meet their pals. They were wanting somewhere where they could be safe, where they could be warm, where they could be nurtured, where they could do things that they wanted to do and try things out they'd never tried before. Um, and all of those things now, and to be in company they enjoyed and to have some help along the way when they needed it. What's not to like about that? And what's not to understand about that? And we've maybe complicated it a wee bit over the years. But I would say, um, I think as a country, we are on the right lines. The rhetoric is all there and in place. What we've got to do collectively is to keep working towards making that more of a reality for more young people every day of the week. And our pledge in YouthLink is to work with everybody and anybody that's remotely interested in the welfare of young people. And we'll continue to do that and we'll continue to talk to politicians of every shape and form and nuance about 
what's best and what's needed for our young people. Because they're not the future, they're here and they're now, and they need to be worked with and alongside, not done to or fixed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Jim. All that remains for me to say is, I think you should join me in a big round of applause for the team who have worked so hard to pull this event together. It's been an amazing night so far, and the night is just, is just so young. Last year, after hosting these awards, um, I stayed at the hotel but was up and away at half past four in the morning, as I will have to be tomorrow morning, and there were still people celebrating in the foyer. No pressure, but I'm expecting the same from you lot tomorrow morning when I leave at quarter past four. I have to go now, sadly. Can't celebrate with you because I have to get my shoes surgically removed from my feet and get my beauty sleep for my breakfast show tomorrow morning. But I'm Arlene Stewart. Thank you so much for your attention tonight. And have a wonderful night celebrating. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just before, just before you go, um, I've got one thing to say, and that is every year, unfortunately, um, the way things are, we lose people. Um, and this year, we did lose someone who many of you will not know, but we thought it was worth um, letting you know um, about someone who has worked in the background for the last 30, 35 years on behalf and advocated on behalf of the youth work center, uh, sector and all the jobs that he had. Um, and his name is Sandy Watson. Um, and Louise and I... Um, particularly because he worked with Young Scott for a great many years. Um, we'd, we'd like to just recognize Sandy's um, contribution. Sandy was, was fairly high up the, 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 the food chain. And in some ways, because of that, he, he wouldn't have had to bother much. He was my boss. He was an assistant director of education in Strathclyde. And he was my boss, and he came out. But Sandy loved to get under the under the, you know, the, the obvious, you know, writing reports and all that, he'd come out and visit you, which was pretty terrifying, to be honest with you, right? And he spent a full day with me in Blantyre. When I was a raw area officer, I was, I was about, I think it was very, I was a very young area officer, I was about 29 or something, and Sandy appeared, and he's got great gravitas, um, Sandy. He was a classics teacher, so Latin and Greek, you can imagine that in Blantyre, can't you? <laughs> and, uh, uh, <laughs> or Blanta, as they called it. Um, and Sandy came out, and he spent about six hours in the place. It was like an inspection. And he, he spent about, um, and, and he went over everything, and he was brilliant. He was really, really good. And at the end of the, the day, we were walking out to the car park in St. Joe's and uh, Station Road in Blantyre, and uh, he turned to me, and he shook my hand, and he says, Jim, he says, if ever you need a reference, And I said, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And he did, that's what he said. And he had a wee twinkle in his eye and he got into the motor and buggered off. And I thought, what'd you do with that? Um, but, uh, but later on, I got my own back because we were, we were doing a, a joint Burns, we were doing a Burns night. And uh, I, I was doing, I think I was the MC, I can't remember. And Sandy was doing the Immortal Memory or somebody. So I introduced him as Sandy Watson from the USA. And he looked at me askance, and I went, the other side of Airdrie. Because <laughs> that's where he came from. But if you've got a glass in your hand, raise it um, and, and say, God bless Sandy Watson, OBE. Thank you very much indeed.